Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how to use your calculator. Now, if you don't have a graphing calculator, you don't have to have one, but I strongly recommend that you get one because they're going to, the graphing calculator will allow you to do many more things, and it also has a, uh, a full screen that allows you to see your work, which will cut down on careless mistakes. Your graphing calculator can help you in many aspects of the test. First, I want you to do all your arithmetic on the calculator. While it's important that you write all your steps down, the final arithmetic should be done in your calculator. And you don't want to be thinking how to do a large multiplication problem when your calculator can do it in just a matter of seconds. Second, we want to use your calculator for all graphing questions. Trying to find out where a graph intersects an axis or where it intersects another graph, you can use your calculator to do that. Third, we want to use our graphing calculator to do all fractional arithmetic problems. Because once we're done, we can just hit the frac button and turn any answer that's a decimal back into a fraction. And lastly, we want to use our graphing calculator to do probability questions, namely NCR and NPR, which is a combination and a permutation. So first, let's talk about graphing. There are basically four main buttons you want to be familiar with to use your graphing calculator for graphing problems. The first is the Y equals button. The Y equals button is used to enter equations that define Y in terms of another variable. You can enter multiple equations here, but make sure you always have the equation in terms of Y, and watch out to use proper parentheses so that the order of operations is done correctly. The window button allows you to change the size of the graph's visual display. This will allow you to see more or less of your graph depending on the domain and range of your graph. If you graph something and it looks really funny, odds are your window is off. Normally I would set your window to negative 10, 10, and 1, meaning that everything would be seen from negative 10 to 10 and the increments would be 1. Sometimes you might need to scale up or down, and oftentimes you could use the zoom fun functions to do that. Calc, this button is used to determine zeros, minimums, maximums, and intercepts. A zero is actually considered a solution because it's where the axis will, or the graph will cross the x-axis. So if you hit calc, you can pick one of those buttons to solve for what you need. Last, table. Table allows you to track x versus y values. You can simply look at a value like x is 2, and it will show you for a given equation what the y value is. Fractions. Fractional arithmetic is, is something you should know how to do. However, I would want you to do it on the graphing calculator to avoid mistakes. So it's fairly easy. Do your, your fractional arithmetic on the calculator. So say if you're doing 2 thirds plus 3 fourths, type in 2 over 3, enter, plus 3 over 4, enter. And now if you want to convert that to a fraction, you simply use the parentheses and hit frac, and then it will turn it into a fraction. Now, in order to do this, all you have to do is hit the math button on your calculator, hit enter, that will insert the frac, and then hit enter again, and it will convert it to a fraction. So the frac button is amazingly powerful, and it can help stop any mistakes you would normally make when doing fractional arithmetic. Now, be careful when you're typing in your fractions that you do include the proper parentheses, because your calculator won't know what you want. You have to tell it what you want. Probability. Probability questions generally involve one of two types with your calculator. One is permutation. Permutations define the number of arrangements R that can be created from a set N. So for example, if we had 10 students in a class and we wanted to pick a president, a vice president, a secretary, we would want to type 10 NPR3. So to do this, what you do is first hit 10, then go to math, the math button, select probability, pick NPR, and hit enter. Now it will say in your calculator 10 NPR. Lastly, type 3, because we're going to pick an arrangement of three things, or into three spots, excuse me, and then hit enter. And that's it. It will tell you how, to, how many arrangements of three you can make from a group of ten. In a very similar sense, com combination problems, are, you're going to do the same thing. Now, combinations determine the number of groups uh, of R, which can be created from the set of n elements. A group doesn't have order, uh, or order doesn't matter. So, for example, again, you had ten students in a class, but you want to pick three students for student council. In this case, the order of those students doesn't matter. So we're going to type ten, then we're going to go to the math button, slide over to probability, hit NCR, and then enter. Now the, the screen will say 10 NCR. And last, we're going to hit 3 and then hit enter. And now you'll have the number of groups that you can make from, of 3 that you can make from a set of 10. So hopefully now you know a little bit better about how to use your graphing calculator. And again, you know, if you don't have a graphing calculator, you can get by, but I strongly recommend that you try to find one to borrow or ask your school uh, if they have any that you could use on the day of the test. Now, no matter what calculator you use, make sure that you practice with the calculator you're going to be using. So if you plan on getting a graphing calculator, see if you can get it during your, your, how, during your practice, and that way you get comfortable with the various functionalities of the calculator. Hope to see you soon. Thanks.